sweet dream flash away <laughs> What's up guys? Mikey Bones here from Slasher Radio, joined by Ali Surreal, Dead by Daylight content creator, Twitch streamer. We're about to be joined by Matthew Cote, but stick around after the interview to hear where you can listen to our weekly show, Slasher Radio, on iTunes, Spotify, everywhere else you listen to podcasts, as well as watch Ali Surreal on Twitch and a whole list of other streamers and content creators for Dead by Daylight that we think you guys are going to love. Matthew, right. how you doing? I'm uh, I'm not too bad. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's a pretty Thank good you. day. It's busy, but uh, I mean, that's that's... It's life. Yes. So, yeah. B- what, busy what, is good. Yeah. What, what do you want to talk about today? Everything. Sure. Uh, <laughs> uh, we, since the last time we talked, you have, you guys have, uh, the amount of stuff you guys have put out is insane. I, I don't remember when, when did we speak last? Holy crap. Allie, when did we speak? Like my memory is uh, awful. Right I think it was uh, Nick Cage right before yeah, okay. Thanksgiving which time, was, which was kind of a big deal. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot. Uh, but since then, before any of that, actually, uh, since we last talked, you guys launched a podcast called Crafting the Imaginary into Play. Yeah. So Crafting the Imaginary us- into Play is sort of behavior's motto, I guess. Uh, Ode can tell me if it's official, but I, I guess it's something that as a studio... Correct. It is some, yeah, it is the the official motto of the studio as a whole. So, uh, nice. for those of you who don't know, uh, there's sort of three business units uh, uh, in behavior. There's a business unit called Behavior Digital, which is where we make our own games. This is where we invest money into creating brand new IPs, like Dead by Daylight, for instance. Meet Your Maker, uh, Islands of Insight. All of these games uh, come from the Behavior Digital division. Then you have a division called Behavior Studios, which is where we do work for hire. Uh, this is this has been the backbone of the company for the last thirty years. It's it's our bread and butter. It's it's how we built our reputation amongst uh, developers and licensors and all of this for the last thirty years. And it's a, a division that is still doing quite a lot of business. Uh, and then there's a third one that's sort of small and weird uh, in a good way. Oh, doesn't like when I use the word weird, but I like weird. Uh, <laughs> but it's it's called business solutions. And that's where we apply what we've learned making games and the tools that we developed. We apply those to things that are outside of the video game industry. For instance, we've done things to help redesign Bombardier's uh, uh custom plane interface and things like that like all these things that we can do easily in 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 video games that we learn to do in video games that we now apply to business problems therefore we provide business solutions hence the name so yes all of these divisions come under the umbrella of behavior and all of these sort of live by the the creed of crafting the imaginary Uh, right uh, yeah and so that podcast is actually something from behavior as a whole it's our our internal uh, communications department that decided to do this and there's been a couple of episodes so far i was happy to be a part of of one of those and i actually had a great time just chatting with uh, with the team there and, and about sort of rambling about this and that it was super fun nice yeah and, and are you guys gonna is that something you're planning to continue i've seen seasons involved because I, I enjoyed it very much uh, of course, yeah. So uh, th- there will be more episodes. I think there's nice. already a second, maybe even a third now. Uh, a third, but yeah. uh, it's uh, it's something that's going to be ongoing, and it's I think it's a great way for people to get a, a bit of a, a peek behind the curtain, right? How how we make yeah. those things, and and how we how we go about, and what sort of business is the video game development business? Absolutely. So the. The community has been asking for different game modes for so long, and we finally got that with the Lights Out modifier, which just added a whole new uh, play style to the game versus normal gameplay. What was the feedback like for you guys? Uh, Honestly, I thought it would be uh, a little more... uh, 
intense as a reaction. Like people mm-hmm. loved it. Don't get me wrong. People yeah. really loved it. It was played quite extensively for a while, uh, but then people went back after I think the the the, the two thirds of the the period we had it for. People went back to playing the the main game mode, which I mean shouldn't be surprising. This is the core gameplay. It's fun. This is what people like. They like to have access to everything that they've learned to to you know uh, strategize with. Uh, but I, I really liked the the lights out game mode. That being said, it's not the last time you'll see it, but it is also the very first of many. Uh, there's been quite a lot of really interesting ideas that have been uh, discussed and tested internally so there will be more modifiers and and game modes that are going to be released in the next few months i want to say okay you kind of stole uh, that is great (laughs) to hear you kind of stole my next question though i a lot of people especially you know the real players everyone who digs into the game a lot of people have been calling it kind of a test and experiment a little bit, you know, one of the things, like I remember when we were talking about this like six years ago, uh, when we had a much smaller player base back then, but one of the questions we had was like, should we create different game modes with a different, like a, a play button? Uh, and we were always very wary of of sort of separating the community and, and therefore sort of the, the, the wait times and the matchmaking and all these things. Mm-hmm. For us, it was always very critical that when you click that play button, you're in a game as quickly as possible. And by breaking the community into different parts, you obviously add a little bit of complexity to the matchmaking. Uh, So yeah, this was a test in many ways. First of all, because of that, like I said, just breaking up the community and offering you different ways to play the game. I think that on that on that side, the test was very conclusive and very positive. It didn't really matter in the sense that it didn't have a negative impact on the experience of people Not just wanting to play the main game. Uh, but at the same time, it was still easy to get into a game in the lights out mode. So there's enough people playing the game that it's a totally valid way of presenting an alternative to people. Uh, and the second thing is, yeah, we wanted to know if people are interested in slightly different mm-hmm. ways of playing the game or very significant ways that are different of playing the game. And and I think that on that also it's very conclusive. Like people are interested in seeing what else we've got, what else we can we can bring to shake things up a little. Uh um absolutely a hundred percent. You know, sometimes you have a few bad matches or something and you you still want to play Dead by Daylight. <laughs> no, and and there there's just another option to enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, because the, the, that's part of the strength of this game, right? Is yes. sometimes it can be very frustrating because mm-hmm. there's variety, because every match is different. And because mm-hmm. of that, it means that like any statistical thing, sometimes you're at the, the end of the bell curve where things are weird or not as pleasant. In the same way that sometimes you'll have a match that's absolutely perfect and then some yes. really crazy things happen and it's unique and it's awesome right so it's the sort of price you pay absolutely yeah next thing i wanted to bring up was iron maiden i want to thank you for the nightmares i've been having from the dredge skin thank you very much for that like (laughs) seriously we've done some cool things over the years but the dredge skin for iron maiden is just yeah yeah that is a next level skin I think the technical term is fucking awesome. Yes, <laughs> yes, that that is correct. <laughs> but uh, uh, the last, I mean, one, the what? rest are also very cool. The, the rest oh, of yeah. the skins are really cool. And and on a very personal note, working with Iron Maiden on something like that has been. A, I mean, it's it's a check mark in the bucket list. Uh, at that's just crazy, right? Yeah, yeah, and that—that's what I was going to ask you. What, how much impact did they have, if any, on the design of these skins? What was it like working with them on the process? Well, to be fully transparent, I—I uh, I didn't talk to any of the members of the band directly. I wish I had, but I did not. We talked to their team, and and their team relays the information. Uh, mm-hmm. But the the awesome thing is, these people, the people managing the Iron Maiden brand 
are I've been doing this for a long time. A lot of the people on that team have been there for for a decade, if not more, uh, and they are awesome. They know they understood exactly what we were trying to do. They were open to it. They had some great insights, some great inspiration. It was super fun. Like these are the kind of partners that are one in a million. They're they're so great to work with. Just the fact that, for instance, you can now buy that shirt that we created for the the survivors. You can yes. buy it. You can not just buy it in our store. You can buy it on the official Iron Maiden store, right? Oh, that's that's yeah. cool. Like it's the same shirt. It doesn't matter where you buy it in the end. But but the fact right. that they were like, yeah, yeah, of course. If we're doing merch, we know how to do merch. We've been doing merch forever. Let's do a great shirt. We'll put it. It's another tour that that Eddie has been on, right? All of these things. It was just it was just awesome to work with. I I don't want to jump around too much. I meant to bring sure. this up later, but it's perfect. I, 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 the term fuck it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> your you guys' shop. I yeah. I was actually talking with a mutual friend Paulie Esther, oh, and yeah. we were talking about how underrated your shop is, and we think this is kind of a, a good stepping stone because of the you know collaboration and everything. I mean, you guys could do so much, and I don't think people really see it enough. At, what does this say for future merchandise? Can, can this expand on what you guys are doing there? Because it's great. We'd love to. I mean, doing stuff with licensors. We've done that with uh, Sadak Cole, so with uh, the people at Kadokawa. Yes. And it's it's usually it's a little delicate. It's a little difficult because we're mixing licenses and merch deals are separate from. It's it gets right. a little complicated sometimes. But when it when we do it, it's really really cool. And as far as our shop for our own stuff is concerned, yes. we. I mean, we love taking risk. We love doing some fun things and just having some just beautiful merch, but also like we did the body pillows for Hooked on You. And, and <laughs> once in a while, we try to do something that's a little weirder because we like it. Uh, right. But but uh, like Behavior is not a company that has been making merch. So it's not something that we're extremely savvy on and and like we've built experience over the last few years we've tried a few different companies like agencies that manage your merge for you and and manage the relationships over there but we've Those never found sticky. one that that really got us and our tone and what we wanted so we decided to do it uh internally instead and it's a lot of work and also it mm -hmm. means that we there's a few things that we won't do because uh because, for instance, we don't have a warehouse where we keep inventory. Right. right. So th there's a few different. Well, we work within limitations with the merch. Yeah. Shop, but 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 because we do it internally and we own it, it means that we can do some crazy things once in a while. Yeah, we've gone even personally with us. We've gone through uh, three different merch. It yeah. is a nightmare. Like, and I don't think people understand that. <laughs> That's tough. I agree. It is. Slipknot, though, is the yeah. next thing. I know, obviously, that's not out yet. Where you can't go in depth with it. But just generally, can we expect the same thing? Are you guys looking to go further? What can we expect from, from that co collaboration? Uh, there's very little like I can. Right. Well, no, it's not true. I could say quite a lot. I'm not going <laughs> to. Uh, but uh, it's going to be different. Because they're different okay, bands, yeah. because it's a different relationship, because it's also a very different image. Uh, but for us, like the idea of bringing in the world of metal into Dead by Daylight has been a, a, a long time project. And I mean, it goes back to me, like I have, well, I don't wear it today, but I often wear my Brutal Legend shirt. Like the world of metal and the world of horror and video games has been sort of meshed for a long time. And I think that uh, it was like, if we pride ourselves on being the Hall of Fame of horror and being a museum dedicated to horror, we needed to have a wing of that museum that is dedicated to metal, right? Because the imagery and the iconography and all of this is so very close and, and and overlaps in so many places so bringing in iron maiden and slipknot is was great for us we wanted to to start with a big bang uh, iron maiden is not only gigantic but it is legendary right no matter how you measure this it's it's the biggest thing out there so 
very likely Slipknot is not the last one either, but it's, it's a good mix because it's one of those bands that are immediately recognizable. Even if you don't know the music, they have worked very hard in creating an imagery that, that fits with it. Yeah. And the music goes great. It, it fits perfectly. The music yeah. in that waiting lobby, it, it, it's just, it's a great match and it was genius yep. from both ends to, to do it. Absolutely. I, I, Allie, are you? Did Ali fall asleep again? Oh, I, think, no. I don't know. <laughs> uh, uh, I told her to drink an energy drink before the last <laughs> after the last uh, ordeal. Uh-huh. Uh huh. One more question about the Iron Maiden <laughs> collaboration. Sure. Um, we've seen a lot of questions from the community about a uh, possible cutoff date to buy those Iron Maiden cosmetics. Is there one set, or will they be available indefinitely? As, as, we have not announced a limited time offer. So. Okay, great. Yeah, there's Perfect. no limit <laughs> right now to, I mean, it's like every license, all of these have durations. Right. Very few people are willing to sign a forever license, uh, but uh, that's not the plan. Okay, awesome. Um, you guys had another uh, gaming collaboration uh, with your last big release with uh, putting Alan Wake into the game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, for us, uh, it's Silent Hill was obviously awesome and Resident Evil 2, but, but Alan Wake in terms of theme and, and narrative, it is probably the closest thing to the universe of Dead by Daylight. Uh, so it was sort of an easy... Uh, an, an easy decision on both sides, right? We, we just looked at it and went, yeah, I mean, Alan Wake could have written something very similar. Also, he is sort of plagued by a dark entity. Therefore, like it, it's, it's all very, very, very close. So it was, it was a perfect fit. And the fact that it's, I mean, Alan Wake uh, the 2 that just came out, well, just came out. I just, it, it was just finished in my house, let's say. Uh, <laughs> It's such an achievement. Like that game is so wonderful. And so it was great to be able to bring that character in that has been an inspiration because obviously Alan Wake's been there forever. To bring him and his flashlight uh, into our game. It's just, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, it was awesome. <laughs> a, a single player massive game icon like Alan Wake has a flashlight. Imagine. Perfect. perfect. <laughs> uh, it was. It, I, I just had a quick question on that too, and and it's a little bit of a sidebar with it. Games versus movies. You guys yeah. obviously have you know collaborated with both, and you mentioned Resident Evil and all kinds of other things. I'm sure they both present their challenges and their benefits. What do you have most fun with personally? It, it, for me, and because my involvement, my direct involvement in these things tends to be not in the nitty gritty of the, the, the daily production. Like I'm, I'm there on the partnership side. I'm there on the like establishing what the content should be about and how we actually work together on things. So for me, uh, like you said, they're very different beasts. Uh, right. The advantages of game is that people understand exactly the language this speak and 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 not just the the language but the fact that when you make video games you have different i i often use the image like we have a, a different set of brushes and paints that we use to create whatever art right and so video games is a different medium to books to tv to movies and therefore when we try to create things in video games sometimes it's harder to explain to someone who spend their life creating movies, what it is that we're going to do and how we're going to paint their IP in a new medium. That's right. not a problem with video game, which is great. It also comes with the added difficulty of they may have expectations, a very precise expectation in the visual language that we're going to use in, in the, some of the power sets sometimes and the design mechanics that don't fit with what they've set up as an IP. Uh, mm -hmm. So they're usually a lot more involved uh, in the design and the actual mechanics rather than just on the visual. Uh, so so there's there's 
good things and bad things on both sides. Uh, to me, it really comes down to ideally working with someone who owns uh, the 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 entirety of their brand directly. Like for instance, we talked to the people at Remedy for Alan Wake. They own their thing. They wrote the story. They can decide what is canon, what isn't. They can change things. They can explain why things, as opposed to, uh, in some instances, we deal with someone who manages a catalog of licenses for old movies. And then we talk to them. And not only do they not necessarily understand video games, but even the IP that they represent, they might not right. have all the versions of it. They might not know the IP personally because they manage a catalog, right? So it sometimes adds a layer. So people that we've worked with who own their thing from start to finish also who are very interested in it. Uh, Kedokawa is a good example with Sadako, uh, which allowed us to create uh, a version of their character that is that is older, right? The, a, a version of their character that is. Uh, because we, we didn't want to have a kid, but uh, right. Yo Yoishi is the actual survivor in, in the canon of the ring, is the only person who ever survived the curse, and therefore is that child. So creating an aged version of him so we could have him as a survivor in Dead by Daylight was something that we worked very closely in collaboration with them. And it is now canon in the world of the ring, which is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. This is what I want to talk about here. <laughs> Go ahead. The new, the new chapter, all things wicked. I would like to start with all the teasers you guys put out because I've never seen, especially a game, just, I, I mean, this was movie level <laughs> that you guys put out here and I was hooked immediately i will How? certainly pass those uh those comments to our brand and marketing team who worked really hard to make that happen i can tell it was it was fun it was that was literally my question how much fun did you have doing for, that? i'd say like for the people directly involved in creating all those assets creating the whole idea of that campaign is very much inspired by the like blair witch project and all this found footage thing and the, the, the that kind of, of cinema it was it was a dream for them and it was a blast because it's super fun and you get immediate intense reaction from the public which which is what you always aim to get right but these yeah. things were like, I mean, we saw the numbers in terms of like uh, interactions and viewership. This was, uh, this was a, one of our most successful campaigns for sure. I've never seen screenshots of text messages trend on Twitter before. It was great. Yeah, and, and that's, that's the, the fun the, of it. The, you know, catching the, the YouTube channel that goes live at midnight with just a, a video that's unexplained and then the live feed just stops and all these little details you talk about polyester uh i love when he puts on his tinfoil hat and goes on these <laughs> crazy like theories of what the next thing could be and feeding the that crazy is yes. is so much fun so much and, fun and that's the you know that there, there's people who just want to get on and play the game and see the dlcs and that's great too but the, to be able to interact and have that other world of guessing and then you open the the community up to talking with each other it was so much fun to i mean from the the text messages to the security yeah. camera you guys really created its own little world there and it was funny because i was talking ali and i with a few of our friends and you know just talking about dead by daylight and the what ifs yeah. and i said man it would be cool as hell to have like a blair witch project thing going on and i have no idea how they would do it but i just want it and then a few weeks later this came out and i was like holy shit wait a minute <laughs> <laughs> but that was kind of what i was going with that found footage feel you guys nailed it thank you that's uh, that's very nice of you to say i'm glad to hear that it was as appreciated from from the outside as it was from uh, <laughs> maybe, uh yeah that's it exactly but no i mean it it, it was it was fun. And there's some of these tropes in horror. I mean, most of horror is made out of these really interesting tropes. Some are 
like I, I, I'd like to say like some of them are are past their due and, and that's okay for us to move forward. And some of them yes. were linked to things that our culture is thankfully left behind. But a yes. lot of them also had to do with these kind of things, which are super fun to play in. Even though they're expected, they still manage to take people by surprise, which is great. Now, I like that we were talking about Alan Wake and you just skipped. You you blasted by the details of Alien and Chucky, which are just, you know, almost. Well, we talked about that last time. I mean, I, hey, I'll talk about Ch that, that Alien and Chucky release. <laughs> I've gone on rants and yeah. about, I mean, just true to form and, and this is the beauty of, of dead by daylight to me like bare bones my favorite thing is the capturing of you know you don't just throw it in there and leave it as is and and you know it, the way you guys have been able to expand on what you can do and we got into it a little last time with yeah. alien you're really able to capture the movie feel now it yeah it uh, yeah and the 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 sort of Damned if you do, damned if you don't of it is that it is now the baseline, right? That's the bare minimum of what an integration yeah. should be now, which is it's a tough act to follow for sure. Yeah, but, you but guys fortunately, did we have a few good ideas left. <laughs> yeah, and, and the challenge of getting it to function in the game, because I'm sure you could make cutscenes of Chucky and the Xenomorph all day sure. long, but... You have to make it function. And so many people were screaming at you guys about Chucky. And fast forward how many months since he's been out. It's honestly, I don't even run into an, an excessive amount of Chucky's anymore, which goes to show it's healthy for the game still. Yeah. Yeah. Well, obviously, when we release something, especially something that that is really well received, which is most of the time, but like you'll see a, a flood of them. Right, you'll you'll play, and for the first week of Chucky, there's nothing but Chucky's everywhere. Yeah, it's fine. I think it's understood. But, yeah. but you're absolutely right. The fact that now you play and people are sort of back to their favorites, and and there's enough variety that you don't always face the same four. Right? Uh, it's it's great. Yeah, absolutely. You'll always uh, get someone who comes in with, you know, Mister Bing Bong. <laughs> he's, he's always going to be there and that's the fun part too not to get off too much about it is that you still see you, you still yeah. see these trappers and the original it, there's such a variety and it is you do get that that landfall of whenever something new comes out everyone's of trying course. it but but it does level out and you do still see killers that have been out since the game literally started you know yeah. and that's a beautiful thing but, and I mean, like you go, like people are still, oh, Wesker, it's just Wesker all the time. Wesker, it's what, almost two years now since that was released. Mm -hmm. So they become the new favorite, but that doesn't take away from anything behind. Like you still see a lot of Legion. You still see the clown once in a while. Oh, some people play yeah. the pig <laughs> exclusively, right? Like it's, yeah. it's, it's. Yeah, it's impressive. It, it's fun to see. It's fun. Yeah. To, yeah, you do get those nights where it's like, ah, I'm just getting this killer. And it's like, well, you know, it, it, that's your bad night of, you know, one. but but you play for a week. <laughs> no, no, not at all. But, you know, like it, it does level out. You know, there's the variety there. And it, that's but hard I, to do with licenses. Yeah, on top but of I it, agree you know? that like if you get three matches in a row with good nurses, it right. makes for a tough night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that is a scary thing. A good nurse. I just twitched a little bit. I just got one of those the other night and ooh, mm -hmm. ooh, it was a bad time. <laughs> See, I, I could never really master that character, but uh -uh. I still think today that it's one of those really impressive ones. When you see someone that's really good as the nurse, it's just so you feel that sort of hopelessness, the sinking yes. feeling, <laughs> which is great. It's very horror. You respect it at the same yep. time. Yeah, that's 100% true. Yeah. yeah as not mad even as mad. I am. <laughs> <laughs> not even mad. That's a hard play, uh, character to play. Yeah. And the next thing for the new chapter, though, is Sable. 
I, yeah. I don't appreciate that you guys left uh, the wedding ring off from me and her because <laughs> that, that is now officially my wife. I don't know if you were aware, Matthew. I, I was not aware. Nobody told me about that. Okay. Uh, her appearance is incredible. She has been the the reception for her has been insane oh, yeah. that I've seen. Very popular, and I you know I'm part of it. What was the inspiration behind her? Because she's you know the relationship with her and Michaela and the lore, sure, but she's even so much more different than Michaela. Yeah, what yeah. was the thought behind her her appearance and the inspiration there? There's a lot of different things that went into it. But uh, like, if you boil it down, I think that the 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 sort of uh, like I was talking about tropes earlier, but the trope of the uh, the got girl is mm -hmm. is powerful. It's strong. Yeah, Michaela was much more of a witch. This one is a little different in that respect, uh, but but still. Uh, and one of the things that I really love about that character, and it's maybe it's strange and it's not going to be popular, but the fact that uh, one of our perks, the invocation, uh, to me, like I, I get, like I saw a lot of posts saying, oh, nobody's ever going to come and sit with you in the basement to finish it. But I think mm -hmm. it's so wonderful and beautiful because it's such a crazy idea to create a, a perk where others can join you in this. And then it and you sort of do a whole ritual. And it's, I mean, all the, like the craft, uh, all of these movies that, inspired that kind of thing and inspired also a, a generation of of got women nowadays and all got girls although i did marry one uh <laughs> that's a win yeah i was going <laughs> to say matt i was like i don't want to bring your personal life into this no. but i think she fits <laughs> but that's it and that that idea of that perk that creates moments that are so cinematic that are so inspired i really 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 enjoy it it might not be one of the strongest perks but i think it has so much flavor and it really tells it helps tell the story of that character congratulations on your recent uh, marriage too by the way thank you very much congratulations you guys are great thanks it's <laughs> very nice to hear Oh yeah, the the invocation um <laughs> was super fun. Um it's really nice to have a different way to uh contribute to your objectives besides yeah. just slam and generators. We haven't had a new like perk type since boons were introduced. That's uh true. do you expect to uh have the same level of impact as those or uh, It's a good question. And I I don't know, it's probably going to have like I cannot imagine that it's going to be the only one. I think there will be others because it's a it's a really interesting mechanic. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, I'll I'll leave it at that. I think it's a great okay. new mechanic, and we'll definitely try different ones. And it's also it allows you to make powers that are much more significant because it requires quite a lot of work to get to it. And at the mm -hmm. same time, it creates sort of a, a side quest or a secondary objective to the game, which is great. And that's the beauty of it, because you, you mentioned both sides, and I've seen both of them. We have friends who, one of them was yelling that, oh, my teammate's <laughs> going to be in the basement. And the other one, uh, or another friend of ours, used that term. It's like a side quest. Then he yep. wants to see more of it. You know, it's that it's a beautiful thing for the game that stuff like that is is blending in. I think so. I think so. But like everything that we release, like the first week is not a good indication of how it's going to like what shape it's going to have or, or what place it's going to settle in inside right. the game. Right. We, we had to give it some time. Yeah, there'll be plenty of people who will try and break it with, you yep. know, builds and and that's the beauty of it. You don't know what it's going to turn into. And I'm sure from you guys. Have, how many right. times have you been surprised with mixes of other perks that people figured out? Well, that's the thing, right? I stopped counting now, but the the number of perks, if you imagine that every character can have three perks, all the combinations possible, even just on the side of survivors, like it's, it. I'm not math enough to figure out exactly how many <laughs> but there's so many combinations like internally we can't possibly test all the different combinations 
right? Like if, if these four characters are there and they all had these different loadouts, they can actually do this, which is like, oh shit, we hadn't thought of that. The PTB helps a little with that because we throw a lot of people at those new things, but usually it takes month, two months, uh, three months before we figure out like, oh, this combo is way too much. That's not going to work. Or we can tweak right. things. Uh, it takes a little while. Here's another sidebar thing, just because you mentioned it and I've been thinking of it for so long and we have you here. Is there ever a world where you guys will have ever considered releasing a character, whether it be killer or survivor, mostly survivor, and maybe they don't come with perks? Maybe they come with one perk. Are you set to the three perks? Uh, I think we're set in this, but I like we've changed the rules and we've broken most of the rules that we've done every single time we release something new which is kind of the point right uh i think that between the the legendary outfit and the survivor like we cover enough ground that we don't need like a a weaker version of the survivor which is what i believe would be the comments from people like if we released a new survivor and they had that, only yeah. one perk people would go oh, well, why are you cheaping out right now are you selling it cheaper yeah. like what's the point why is what's happening here uh so yeah i i, I doubt that we're going to do that also there's not much of an advantage to it uh yeah i don't know okay i don't, I don't think so okay just always something i've been wondering because no, like you uh, said the question the perk pool is so large, you know, and, and yeah, yeah. I, but I could see that that's a, that's an unfortunate side and, of it. Yeah. But that's it. Like I, you, in, in a sense, we could probably make a valid argument saying, you know what, there's, a, there are enough perks in the game. Yes. We don't need to bring in more perks. It's fine. Mm -hmm. Especially if you, you know, you bring in a brand new friend who's never played DBD, they launch the game and they go, what the hell is all this? Like, there's so much. <laughs> I don't understand. And then you get into a game and you look at the screen and you go, oh, this guy's got this and this and this. And they go, well, how can you tell? Like, how do you or like, oh, the yeah. icon, right? You can clearly see it's it's uh, that hard. And you're like, I have no clue what you're talking about. <laughs> like, you're right. You could absolutely make a very compelling argument in saying there are enough perks in the game. But every time we bring in new perks, we do things like, for instance, the invocation is a good example. Right. Like it, it adds it helps it makes the game better and bigger uh, and and it's the uh, i think that the fact that this whole game lives by the fact that it completely surprises you like horror is about not being exactly sure who you're up against or what they're bringing to the table or what's going to happen and by having so many killers different killers you could be facing and so many places this could happen in even though not every map is your favorite. Not every map is actually as well balanced as all the others, clearly, because right. there's so many. Not every perk is as useful. It makes so much variety that it is possible to play this game over and over and over again for the next five years and be surprised and still be entertained. I think that it's... Yeah. In other games, it might not work, but in this one, it does. Because that's the other thing also is you don't need to understand. You don't need to look at the loadout of all the other survivors and understand what they bring to the table. You don't need to. Just do some gens, get out. That's fine. Yes, I agree. <laughs> uh, one of our co-hosts is uh, he's a multi a single player game player traditionally, and we've gotten him into Dead by Daylight. So he is experiencing the Good. starting of dead by daylight and you know he we feel the struggles with him and he's also uh he jokes about the basement stairs moving because he right. always finds his way to the basement somehow and gets lost in it <laughs> somehow <laughs> and that's exactly it right that's supposed to be a very familiar place that is still not the way you thought but to yes. me it's always been the image of like when you dream of, of this high school you used to go to that you know by heart, but then this door used to be a door that led to, I don't know, science class, and then you open it and it goes down into a basement now. 
Like it's yeah. extremely familiar, but completely unknown at the same time. And so, yeah, he's, he's living the dream, rediscovering everything. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and sp- you walked right into it. The speaking of the unknown, yes. uh, this killer's wild. He's crazy. We talked about the found footage aspect earlier. And yeah. you think of Blair, Witch, uh, paranormal activity, maybe in all these titles. And I had no idea what to expect. And then, Boom, we see the unknown, and I still have no idea what to expect. He's because <laughs> looking at him, it could be anything. It's like, what is that? I know he's named the unknown for a reason, <laughs> but what can you say about him? Because every there's so many questions flying around. I can say that even internally, there were a lot of questions about it, and not just <laughs> during production. Like, are we really gonna do this? Like, is he is he right? Is he scary? Is he he's perfect? Funny, and and like I think that the close like if if you just see a picture of him, like an image, you probably think he'd fit right in and a lineup in, in the Beetlejuice universe or something like that. Yes, right? he's a little bit of a caricature. He's sort of distended form, but then when he moves and when he's in the game, he's mm-hmm. not funny anymore. Uh uh-uh. uh. Like there's no. nothing funny about that creature. Is it a, that guy? I don't know. But he's not right. funny anymore. He he's smiling, but he's not mm-hmm. funny. <laughs> and I think that it it hit just the right notes. And it's such a delicate balance to, to really tackle in the in the concept and the animation. The animation team did an amazing job on it. Uh it's just even the power is is upsetting i think it it yes. makes you feel like you should i don't know go for a shower after the game <laughs> <laughs> watching him break a pallet i feel that way it is <laughs> creepy <laughs> yeah yeah it is so yeah it's it's one of the ones that i'm very happy with uh i think that uh, original chapters are always stressful for us I mean, doing licenses is, is difficult for many reasons, and we've discussed those at length, but doing original right. chapters, it's very tough, especially after, what, the 15th original chapter? I don't know exactly, uh, but like we have to create something that is new and surprising, but it also has to hit a lot of notes of expected things in horror and it can't step on the toes of any of the licenses that we have or that we would like. Uh, so it is a very, very delicate balance. And it's a really tough job. Uh, but uh, once in a while, I think that like this chapter, we managed to hit it out of the park. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, it, and you know, like we mentioned earlier, Xenomorph, Chucky, Alan Wake, Nick Cage. I mean, you guys have been coming so heavy lately yeah. and now it's your turn to kind of the ball's only in your court and it's yep. an original character and yeah I, th- I think you guys are up to par for sure this one was in every aspect yeah you know it, it's it's great another uh, probably uh, even more than my wife sable my favorite part of this release is the map honestly and obviously i'm a movie yeah. guy but you know it, and it's a movie theater but even past that the arcade the functionality of the map, side by side palettes, holy shit! What went into the design here from from the theater itself, which is beautiful, and then you know the gameplay changes with the side by side palettes. Well, I think the short answer is what went into designing this is almost ten years of designing Dead by Daylight. Uh, we've learned a couple of things, and. Like you said, we did a few licenses in the last uh, few months. And so a few, <laughs> yeah, well, a couple. And, and so now it was time for us to sort of do our own thing and really showcase if when we have 100% freedom, what can we do? With it, right. And so, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting. You, you're, you're right. I think that the theater specifically is is so well rendered but also just the lighting of it makes 
were very interesting bits. Uh, and and the, the actual game design itself, when you're talking about the, the side-by-side palettes, again, it's it's years and years and years of studying how people play, what makes it interesting, how can we switch things up, uh, how can we force people to reevaluate the, the the meta game, sort of like yes. the the strategies that you've been living with for the last two months that you're like, nah, I've got this game nailed now. Watch me go, and then we sort of throw a wrench in it and force you to develop a brand new way of playing. It's it's sort of always at the forefront of our our concerns when we create new content, whether it's a new killer power or whether it's a map. And I think that in this one specifically, there are a couple of elements that really that 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 yeah that surprised people. So yeah, I guess good job. I'm saying I that because I, I didn't work on it. <laughs> <laughs> not not a level designer, but yeah. <laughs> Uh, is side by speaking of it real quick again just something i've been wondering in the conversation is that something we can expect going forward like will maps feature this or is it exclusive here it, you know if it if we see that people love it and it's really appreciated and it leads to some really interesting gameplay and not just like oh when there's a side by side palette that's what you do and everybody knows and that's sort of the thing if it actually leads to variety of strategies and it leads to some interesting moments you can right. absolutely bet that there will be other uh, and, and if we realize that it's a, a little boring and and people have a ready-made strategy on how to use it which i doubt but mm. who knows uh then probably we'll tweak it until it's exciting right which is what we usually do it's it's uh, it takes quite a lot for us to throw away something like that like we, right. we usually strive to make it work and and it's a good idea maybe it's just not perfectly balanced and that's the thing we won't know until people have played for at least a month on it we right. used to react very very quickly i remember uh i think freddy the release of freddy i don't know if you were there for that but yes when we released that i think we patched a, like a major tweak mm -hmm. a week after and um, um, and as as we patched it, we went. Oh, I don't think we should have done that, like, because right, we, we nobody had had time to really try it and to really intensely like play with it and see what could be done. We just sort of knee jerk reacted immediately to the subreddits filling up with people screaming, which is just another Wednesday, right? It's normal, <laughs> yeah, normal now. No, you're you're right, yeah. So we'll see. Speaking of the new map, um, Greenville Square is actually a new section opened up in the Withered Isle map. Can we expect other maps to have like expanded sections like that added in future updates? Uh, I don't want to say anything too stupid, uh, but I believe so. Nice. Uh, yeah, and uh, that's a slippery terrain for me to get on but i i believe so okay that, that's nice to hear that it's at least a thought though because you know people's favorite maps and it's just redoing them without reworking them kind of yeah and also uh, i mean on a purely production uh, side it's it's not as difficult to create a variation in an existing map than it is to create a brand new map with a brand new setup and new all new assets right uh, so yeah it's it's a it's a, an idea that the producer likes for sure yeah okay here's where i try and get you in a little bit of trouble because sure. uh, i know i know it's something you can't talk about but i have to ask obviously the movie is still highly anticipated i constantly see people talking about it jason blum kind of spiked the, the charts a little bit recently where he said that you guys are still looking for a writer, still looking for a director. That was yeah, the you're looking for that. a job. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Million of ideas <laughs> for this. Yes, I am. Uh, but he, he said, uh, you know, he said that recently and last time we spoke, that's kind of where it was left off. Yeah. I want to ask you if there's any update in this, but obviously I know that's uh, a there delicate is no thing. Public in a lot of, update. Right. 
Okay. Okay. We are still all, and I say all of us is like me and my boss and a couple of other people at behavior. And then, uh, Jason Blum and his team and a few other people at atomic monsters. Right. All of these people are still actively pursuing this project right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and the goal is still to be able to as quickly as we can announce a, a writer or director or writer director or whatever to just tell people this is happening and this is who is going to be spearheading the project. So, yeah, hopefully well, we have an announcement to make uh, soon. Well, I know this is, uh, you know, obviously just me, but to, to counteract your Wednesday Reddit uh, <laughs> screaming matches a little bit, I, I don't know why people are getting so mad at this. Uh, to rush into anything just to, to have an announcement and get things started with movies is never the answer. And I, I applaud you guys for trying to make it right and wait till everything's perfect. Cause that's the way you need to do it. And you know, I don't know why people are so mad about it, honestly. Well, yeah, well, on the one side, it's like, uh, I was talking about the merch earlier. We are not a company that makes movies. So it right. is a world that we are not very familiar with. So we have a lot to learn. Fortunately, we have managed to find a great partner in, in Blumhouse. They know yes. how to make movies for sure. And they certainly know how to make horror movies. So it, it's absolutely a good fit in that. And we trust them wholeheartedly. Uh, there's one thing that, like this could turn into many, many different things, that project, but there is one thing for sure. We will never allow a bad dead by daylight movie. To release. Nice. We'd much rather scrap it and not have a movie and have something that's not great there you go yeah and that's the answer that's a hundred especially with how much you guys have to offer for a movie franchise i, I think there's quite a lot to do there there's a lot of right. really cool stories to tell uh and uh yeah i mean even doing the comic book uh, run i don't know if you've mm -hmm. had a chance to read the comic book run uh i i liked it quite a lot and doing that experience was super fun because it's like I said, it's another completely different medium to tell our stories. And, and it was a, a great learning experience for us. And, and it's not the end. Like, uh, that run worked really, really well, uh, with Titan comics and, uh, it, comics are a great way to tell stories. So we'll most likely have more. Nice. That's good to hear as well. Uh, one more question I had based on, you know, uh, to regards to the movie. And this is kind of just a, maybe put something to rest because so many people since this movie was announced, your partnership with Blumhouse, Atomic, it, it, a lot of people have been asking and this is going to influence future DLCs for the game, you know, like Blumhouse has an unlimited, Megan, Insidious, and then go on forever. Does that partnership with the movie can it influence? Does it have any, you know, any legs for influencing and creating groundwork for DLC content in the future? I mean, anytime we have a partnership with people who own interesting horror licenses, then clearly we're one step closer to those licenses if we wanted to put them into the game. It's, it's yes. a much simpler thing to pick up the phone and call someone that you know that you have an established relationship with. It's much easier. So if we wanted to do these things, it's something that would absolutely be within our grasp. Uh, the other thing also is, <clears throat> sorry, if we were to release a great Dead by Daylight movie in which some new characters are introduced, it would be kind of silly of us not to then introduce them to the game, right? Okay, perfect. I'm going to leave it at that. There you go. We just had a couple of community questions that uh, we picked out. Some of them, <laughs> I don't know how you guys do it. You're, the questions that <laughs> are incredible. Uh, but we weeded out some of the ones that aren't uh, a little ridiculous. Uh, okay. I want to start with this one because I feel like my life might be in danger if we don't ask you this question. Friend of uh, of our show, of our community, are you are you familiar with the film Night of the Creeps, by the way, Matthew? It rings a bell, but I'm not familiar. 
Okay, well, th- this is a friend of our community. Will we, his nickname is Will the Thrill, and he has a button on our soundboard from that movie. Okay, Don't thrill me. <laughs> uh, he wants to know, and he's been asking for the landscape of how killers have changed, and even the game has changed since Michael Myers released. Do you guys have any thought or plan or anything on reworking him? Pass. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. Uh, 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 Paul Esther is coming up again. He uh, uh, he wanted us to ask you, and th- this is another one that is probably going to be a pass, but it- it's a very interesting thought. Are there any plans on more Hellraiser legendary skins? Given so many, they have so many Cinnabites you could throw in yeah. there, and we have a lot of fun with it. Uh, there's no plans uh, today. Okay. Okay. And also, I would be remiss if I didn't. One of my favorite things in the world is Paulie going off on Dino <laughs> Dewitt's tail. It's one okay. of my favorite things. <laughs> Where's the tail? Why don't we have the tail in BC? What happened to it? <laughs> His rants on this are legendary. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I kind of. Uh, yeah, I have no idea. I, I'd have to ask. I'm not the, that's not under my jurisdiction. But okay. I can ask some people. We'll do a deep dive. A deep dive into the tail department. Nice. I am yeah. a Dino Dweet main, so I have a little skin in that game as well. I, I do uh, miss the tail. Uh, I, we only really have like two more questions here. <laughs> All right. Uh, another <laughs> friend of the community, Dweet, they, they brought up a great question. That in this newest chapter, All Things Wicked, Sable is using a flip phone. And this could indicate that her and Michaela's story begins in the 90s, early 2000s. Is there any validity to that? It could also indicate a nostalgia for that period, which is also not unheard of. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, that's going to be my answer. Okay. Another question from a friend of our show, Kate, big Dead by Daylight player. The report system, and I feel like this is important because a lot of people oh, throw yeah. this around. It was very big that you guys implemented that, uh, implemented that, and so many people. You either get people who say, "Oh, report them, and it'll help," or you get the people who say it does nothing. And I think, like I said, I think it was very important that you guys put this in the game. Could you maybe explain how you guys handle that a little? Uh, I I wish, uh, but. I, this is a question for our player experience team. Uh, I, right. I don't want to say anything stupid. What I can say with absolute certainty, though, it does actually have an impact. It does matter quite a lot to report people. It's true that you may be reporting someone for something and you might not see an immediate uh, result, uh, but it doesn't mean it is useless to do so. Uh, we have a thing that actually tells people if their reporting actually led to something. I think in right. most cases, we also use that. But either way, do report things that you see that are worthy of that. Uh, it has an impact. It is absolutely something that we look at. We, we, we dig into it. We go and get, we obviously have tools so that we can get a lot more information about what exactly happened. And when we, are certain that someone has acted poorly or that that something needs to be done we take action for sure yes okay yes continue to use the reporting you are helping make the game environment better nice the last question that we had was disable has a voice lines which you know a lot of people didn't expect original character you don't see that too often is there any thought into going back and maybe retroactively doing that with killers, survivors, there any interest there? There is interest, but uh, again, it's it's the fact that there are so many at this point, right? Right. And, and, and where do you start? Do you start from first one and do, do the trapper and give him some voice lines? Or, or do you start, you know, back from the most recent ones and... And if we do that, then we're not working on the next content because obviously it's the same people. We can't add right. more people just to go and do voices for the other ones. And and especially because voice work is 
is is uh, is something that's difficult to to do in parallel and do twenty seven yes. at the same time, right? It's 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 voice actors, it's recording boots, it's uh, it's intensive work. So yes. yes, there have absolutely been conversations about that and the possibility of it. I think it's unlikely. What's most likely to happen is that we're going to continue to do that in the future for the upcoming chapters, for more of the content that we create uh, to give people more and more rich experiences. And, and then, and then the, the, the original ones like the, the trapper and the, you know, the rate and, and the hillbilly will continue to live on in, 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 not in black and white, but, but in the world of nostalgia. Yes. And that's a beautiful thing too. Matthew, thank you so much for your time today, man. It's always a pleasure and a blast. It's, seriously, uh, uh, O doesn't have to convince me much when she says that, uh, that Slasher Radio wants to talk. Um, I'm always going to be here. It's, it's super fun. I really appreciate your, your, you being part of the constructive side of our community. And I really yeah. appreciate what you do. So, I, you. We appreciate you guys. Thank you very much. And I'm glad, Al, Al, you didn't fall asleep, did you? No, did not fall asleep this time. Wow. Hello. I'll Thank take you. it as a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll I, I expect you to poke again so that we can sit and talk, let's say, after the anniversary when we drop the mic on a few really cool news and we can chat about that. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Looking forward to it. Yeah, looking forward right. to it already. Thanks, guys. Wonderful. Have a great Thank you day. guys so much. Bye. All right. We'll later. Bye bye. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed that. Apparently, we will be back with Matthew in May or June for the anniversary. That's dope, Bally. I'm looking forward to that already. Yeah, me too. Yeah. But you can listen to Slasher Radio every single week. It won't be on YouTube. We're going to be trying to get clips from the show up on here, but you can listen on Apple, iTunes, Spotify, all these other places. You can check the links in the bio and stuff. Just search Slash Radio. You'll be able to find it. One, two, three. We're actually just starting our Murder Madness tournament. That's a March Madness bracket style tournament. This year, we are doing quadrants, 70s, 80s, 90s, and 2000s horror movies. They're all facing off on this bracket to crown one winner. So that's starting later this week. You can follow the show on Twitter at Slash Radio. And also check out our Patreon, patreon.com forward slash slash radio tier starting as those $3 a month support the show, please. You can check me out at Mikey's Dead on Twitter. You can check out my co-hosts Rob and Cat at Radio Rob123 and at Cat underscore Valor on Twitter. Allie, where to catch you? You can find me at Allie Surreal on Twitter or Twitch. And Movie Nights in Discord on Fridays, huh? Yep. Yeah, we do those. Yeah, you do those. Horror movies. Horror B movies. Ugh. Yes, specifically. Yeah. Hold on one second. <laughs> also, check out our friends. Allie has a great community on her Discord. That's where a good amount of these people come from. So great community. Go check out her Discord. You can check out our Discord. Also, check out our friends. They're great content creators. These are some people who are really grinding right now, putting out great content. Check out our friend Huff and Puff. You like that? At Huff and Puff on Twitch. Huff is a very dear friend of the show, and his stream is a great time. You will laugh your ass off. You will interact with him, which will be a lot of fun. And the loops that the dude's a juicer. The loops are crazy. And honestly, just one of the most entertaining people I've ever met. And genuine good dude. So he should be at the top of your list if you haven't checked out Huff and Puff already. Our friend Duke Rye, that is Will the Thrill. Thrill me. His YouTube channel is at Duke Rye, D-O-O-K-R-I. A lot of great horror content, a lot of deep dives, really good stuff over there. A lot of horror gaming content. Yeah. Another, I guess, friend of the show. You can find her on Twitch at it's underscore Kate 11. She puts in a lot of DVD time on Twitch, so make sure you go follow her, check her out. She also has a redeem on her channel called Hands Off, where she has to take her hands off of her keyboard immediately for 10 seconds. And if you time that some bitch just right, you're going to have yourself a good time. So head <laughs> over, go tell Kate 
I said she sucks and be sure to use that hands off channel point redeem and tell her it was from me. I'd appreciate that a lot. Uh, Crescent do uh, our friend Cressy. Everybody loves Cressy. Everybody love Cressy. Everybody love Cressy. Crescent dude 85 on Twitch. Uh, another friend of the show, Strang Bats. You can check them out on Twitch. And Somber OW. Uh, these guys always help throughout the process. They, they just show so much support and friendship above all else. And their communities are great. Their content is great. We wouldn't be telling you guys to check it out if it wasn't. All these people work really hard. They have a lot of passion for what they do. They put a lot of work into what they do. Highly entertaining highly insightful and just a, a, a lot of stuff you guys need to keep on your radar so be sure to check them out also alley stream is great dead by daylight streamer for a long time uh I, I like to call her the encyclopedia of dead by daylight and you're just never going to get the experience of dead by daylight that you get on one of alley streams uh, you have to see it for yourself so definitely do not forget to check out at alley surreal on Twitch. So if you find a little time, be sure to check them out. Also, big thanks to Polyester and Schmuckles for all their support. Everybody knows about them, but their support to us means a lot. Also, Dweet on Twitter, D V V E E T. They always show us a lot of support as well. I don't appreciate Polly bullying me though. Well, I appreciate Polly bullying you <laughs> immensely. Yeah, that, that Polly, keep that up for sure. Uh <laughs> this is supposed to be a quick outro, but Paulie, I, I just want you to know, because I know that you're listening, you have a button on my soundboard. Don't you have an interview to fall asleep during again? Wait a minute. God damn uh, it. That didn't, re- that didn't actually happen, though, right? Yeah, right. It did. It did. Uh, <laughs> it did not. <laughs> while we're bullying Allie, Schmuckles has one, too. It's the girl who fell asleep on Matthew Cote. No way. God damn it. No way. No way. Uh, but yeah, their their support means the world to us and they're great content creators. And, you know, just to share the space, and especially talking about the same game, is really dope for us. Even Ot Starva, he shouted us out a little bit in uh, one of his videos. So that was really cool of him as well. But keep up with Slasher Radio on all our platforms. If you're a horror fan, this is the show for you. Until we do this again in May or June. Good night from Slasher Radio. Heidi ho. <laughs> Heidi ho. <laughs>